Because the LGRS only measures distance changes, there's no direct way to tell whether those or how much of those distance changes are due to gravity and how much are due to the other forces. The size of changes that we're worried about are micron level. It's one one millionth of a meter, so that's very tiny. We have a, a budget of about 15 microns end to end across the system of error that we're uh, allowed. And uh, we're very possessive of all of those microns when we uh, distribute them out to the different aspects of the flight system. The number one non-gravitational force that we're worried about is the solar pressure. The uh, force that results on the spacecraft when the sun shines on it and reflects off of it. And then there's an infrared force that comes because the spacecraft has a different temperature on different faces of the spacecraft. And that warmth of the spacecraft actually radiates in the infrared, and because there's different amounts in different directions, that exerts a force on the spacecraft. Like all things, when temperature changes, shape tends to change, things that heat up tend to expand. So uh, we're very sensitive and aware of how the spacecraft bus changes its dimensions as it moves in and out of shadow around the moon. And then if the spacecraft has something that evaporates, for instance, the evaporating gas will exert some thrust, and all of these affect the, uh, the orbit. The scientist and the engineering team uh, spent a lot of time understanding how big these effects are going to be. How big is a solar panel? How reflective is a solar panel? How hot is it going to get? Um, how can we manage the heaters on board the spacecraft? All of these tiny effects, uh, you know, checked and rechecked and, and managed by the spacecraft team in development and by the operations team to make sure that the science measurement is made as, as cleanly and, and reveals the gravity as, as, cl as clearly as we would like.